Let's turn to Omid Safi, a professor of Asian and Middle Eastern Studies at Duke University. Professor Safi, welcome to the program. There is so much that we want to talk about. Let me first begin by getting your reaction to this. Were you surprised to learn Professor Prater had been fired over showing a picture, an image of Prophet Muhammad in her art history class? Uh, thank you, Asya, for having me on. I was saddened and also deeply, deeply unsettled over this incident, and so are a number of other academics. There are 13,000 academics who have signed a petition asking for her to be restored to her job if she so chooses. Um, I want to point out that for a lot of us, we don't see this as an issue of academic freedom versus Muslim sensibility, since so many of us, myself included, are Muslim scholars of Islamic studies. The issue is really a lost opportunity over the expansive historical reality of Islamic civilization. There are certain Muslims who have objected to the pictorial depictions of the prophets, whereas historically there have been many, many Sunni and Shia Muslims uh, from Turkish, Persian, and South Asian backgrounds who have used these images for devotional purposes. So I think it's really an opportunity to pause and learn and educate one another. Professor Safi, what did this image show exactly? Can you educate us on that department? Sure. Uh, it is an artist's imagination of the Prophet Muhammad having received the first revelation of God, the Quran, through the Archangel Gabriel in a cave on a mountaintop. So, so there was nothing was... offensive about it. It wasn't like things perhaps printed or published by Charlie Hebdo. Not at all, not at all. And in fact, one of the things that is striking is that devotional images produced historically by Muslim artists for Muslim communities for the stated purpose of bringing people closer to God and closer to the Prophet are being treated in the same way that the pornographic and Islamophobic images of Charlie Hebdo were. And I think we have to have a little bit more uh, imagination here to treat these images as what they are. Professor Safi, let me read you a statement uh, put out by Hamlin University. This is what they had to say. They said to look upon an image of the Prophet Muhammad for many Muslims is against our faith. It was important that our Muslim students, as well as all, all other Muslims, feel safe, supported, and respected both in and out of our classrooms. Does this concern you in the sense of your own teachings? Of when you go to your classroom, are you worried about, should I show this? Should I not show this? Should I talk about this? Should I not talk about this? Is it going to change how you do your job in your classroom at Duke University? So, you know, this semester, I happen to be teaching a course on the life, the legacy, and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad. And during the course of the semester, we are going to be looking at some of these images. What I tell my own students is this. Sometimes we like to speak about academia and universities as if they are a safe bubble secluded away from the larger public discourse. The fact of the matter is that we as a human society, particularly in Europe and North America, are having a really hard time talking across difference right now. And that public reality also now is reflected at the university scene. The culture wars are also part of the academic scene. So my goal is that we make the classroom space an opportunity to study the spectrum of practices that have marked what it is to be Muslim. We don't have to agree. It is not my intention to persuade every student that they should like or own uh, these devotional images of the Prophet. But nor are they entitled to deny the fact that for almost a thousand years, there have been other Muslims equally devout, equally in love with the Prophet, equally in love with God, who found these images an important part of their faith tradition. You know, what I don't understand, Professor Safi, I know you're Iranian-American. I grew up in Iran and spent my childhood there. And I don't remember 
I don't remember this controversy as a child. In fact, I was talking to a colleague of mine. We would go to certain religious parts of town, and there was always some kind of illustration or depiction, an image of Prophet Muhammad. And yeah. I don't remember this back then being any kind of issue. And of course, I'm talking about the time before the 1979 Islamic Revolution. That's right. That's right. So here's one of those ways in which uh, it's a teaching moment. So the fact of the matter is that in Turkish contexts, Persian contexts, and South Asian contexts, these images have always been present. There's other parts of the Muslim world, the Arab context, Sub-Saharan Africa, and Southeast Asian, in which they've been absent. And so today, largely because of the influence of particular Salafi readings of Islam, that point of view is now being exported all over the world and is much more commonly found. Part of what I want to do is to not necessarily favor and privilege any one point of view, but rather to document the spectrum of historical practices.